In my case, about uh, 1975 is when I first started exploring it, when I moved to Hitchin um, with a small daughter, one-year-old, who didn't easily get to sleep, and uh, sticking her in a backpack and taking her off down the, the road across the Wharton Head and joining up on the Ickneal Way was a good way of uh, getting her off to sleep. I moved down to Letchworth when I finished university and um, the house I lived in was on the Ignealed Way and uh, I'd always known about the old roads because Dad used to talk about the Great North Road and Ermine Street um, and the Ignealed Way. You started walking <laughs> it before I did really. Yes, we you? started walking it before there was an Ignealed Way Association and a marked trail so it was a matter of following the, the old lettering on the maps and seeing where it took you and sometimes it took you to a hedge that didn't go any further Sometimes it took you across uh, miles of uh, green road. It is a massive route. The width of the road between the ditches that we've identified is 10 or 11 metres. Given that the side ditches on Roman roads are normally about 6 metres apart, this indicates that it's a roadway of some significance. I suspect that it's used for moving livestock. Um, archaeologically, it can only be traced between Royston and Dunstable. So it's moving from an area of fairly lowland grazing 
up into the Chilterns. And it could be that it's to do with the movement of livestock during the summer months when you can take them up to higher pastures. There is good evidence that during prehistory people did move around with their flocks. And also right through into recent times you have droveways taking livestock as meat on the hoof from Scotland into London. So people were accustomed to moving their animals over what could be vast distances. The site appears to be a Neolithic henge, some kind of ritual monument. It's a monument that seems to have been built before about 3000 BC, continued in use up until probably around 2400 BC, and was subsequently forgotten. And what it tells us is that people in the late 4th millennium BC in this area were coming together to build monuments. Um, the entrance faces precisely due east. Uh, due east gives us an alignment on the equinox sunrises, uh, both autumn and spring, but it's also whether this is coincidence or not, faces the springs of the River Ival, which are just in between the Henge and the Eastern Horizon. Um, and it may well be that the reason the Henge is here is to have both this view out to the east and a view across the springs. trees are mainly, mainly beech, but there are a lot of very, very tall, beautiful pines growing amongst them. But I really love this area of woodland. Um, and through the trees and the other side, through the fields, um, there's an unexcavated henge monument. It might be a henge. It could be um, a causeway camp. And I'm fascinated by that. I'm fascinated by the fact that there are all these layers under where we walk.
part of being an artist is about giving voice to something that doesn't have a voice. Um, so many people have forgotten what the Ignilde Way is. Um, its history, it's, it runs past and through Luton and yet so many people in Luton don't even really know that it's there. I feel a compulsion to give voice to how to how magical it is, um, how beautiful it is, um, and how much history is is right underneath people's feet. Um, and all you have to do is take a little walk from the town centre, get your walking boots on, and then all of this is just waiting for you. It, it's all here to be walked on and enjoyed and loved and. If my paintings and my photos, and I, I take a lot of photos along the way, if that can introduce people to all of this and, and make them understand it more and make them want to walk it, then I'll, I feel that, well, it's a job well done. Um, this is just what I love doing. It's just what I love doing. sort of in and out and around the hills and the fields with woodlands and um, but yes I, I think every now and again you'd get a clearing um, especially at the high points especially where we are here where um, you'd have these big burial uh, mounds and chambers um, it's rumoured um, just looking at the song named as five abaras and nine um, the knolls themselves we call them the five knolls there's five distinctive knolls um, actually, visually, you can pick out six, um, but looking back into history, there were actually nine barrows. Um, eight, again, eight um, kings um, were rumoured to be buried under the knolls, um, but the most northerly um, knoll um, is rumoured to be buried a, a queen, a warrior queen. Queen Boudicca, um, Boudicca, she was rumoured to be buried um, at a crossroads. Being a queen, she would have been buried at a place very much like the Five Knolls, up in, you know, up on the heights, um, in the hills. Um, and, and of course, this was right along the path that would have led back to her particular tribe. Um, so it's rumoured that she was, she killed herself. So everything points to the fact that that could be um, Queen Bosia buried at the top of the Five Knolls. I'd certainly like to believe that anyway. Stillness of earth, but alive in our mind. Ancestors ours in distant reaches of time. Ancient lost days and our future to come. Clan of the hills at the height of the wheel. Sun, sun, 
sun. Wild wind eels, kites and windmills, everlasting landscape of distant thought and feeling. I think anything that has a kind of historical connection, people like to walk it, like Hadrian's Wall, um, Icknilled Way, it, everyone where it's been trodden on before by generations upon generations, and certainly within the pagan community, anything that sort of stretches from these sort of hilltops all the way down to Avebury has a real sort of magical, ancestral kind of memory and that if you walk it somehow you kind of tap into it. The dry ground made travel easier and the high commanding view gave a measure of protection for traders warning against potential attacks. The Ridgeway has been used for at least 5,000 years. The remains of long barrows and round barrows have been found and new stone and bronze age. To those who've walked this way before us. Yeah, I got imagery. Um, a sense of like a stream. I got a sense of a stream, a river, flowing and various undercurrents and flows and rushing through air and land. And then it kept popping out at various places in greenery. Some I recognise as the ignored ways around here and others I, I just don't know where that is. Then I got a sense of the red kite, which I saw earlier today, funny enough, and um, it was just flying all round various hilltops, back and forth, and then I kind of morphed into one, flying over landscape, and then what was really quite, I didn't expect, I kind of, thinking of the ancestors at the time, and saw lots of, sort of skulls, sort of half buried into the earth, looking out back at me. Um, just the dead everywhere, quite frankly, all across the hilltops, all across this area, and, Naturally, people um, buried their chieftains and, and their people on these hilltops, connecting to the to the sky realm and um, and the earth. The intentions are all sorts of things, but just sort of seeking that connection, really, ultimately. And if you don't have that route or connection, you somehow feel not quite connected to the land.